Hello and how's it going? The last video was a bit slow paced and confusing so I thought I would give it another go here in part 2 to move at a quicker, hopefully more engaging pace. At the end of the last video we ended up with a bit of a cliffhanger at the end of a very messy soldering montage. With that said we are going to try to start fresh and show the end product all in this video. Starting at the beginning, our goal for this project was to get a non-working Super Famicom and stick a Raspberry Pi on the inside while maintaining as much of the original Super Famicom vibe as possible. We started out by disassembling the Super Famicom and taking out its non-working guts. We then removed the parts we needed from it, namely the power port, multi-out port, and the reset switch. Once those were all removed from the main board, we moved on to the soldering, and boy was there a lot of soldering. We had to solder the multi-out port to this blank PCB so we could attach a set of headers for the AV out. We then had to solder the controller ports to the USB adapter. Once that nightmare of a soldering experience was over, making sure we didn't cross any of our wires, we were able to solder the reset switch to its PCB, and finally the power switch to the power coming directly out of the barrel jack from the back. Now I know that it doesn't seem like a whole lot of soldering in retrospect, but boy were some of those connections fiddly. Once all the soldering was done, it was time to assemble our monstrosity and get our buttons programmed for the functions we hope to utilize for the safe shutdown script. The layout is pretty simple. The SD card adapter goes from the extension port on the bottom of the case to the bottom of the Pi. The power plugs into the usual micro USB. The USBs get plugged into the existing USB ports on the Pi. The most complicated part of wiring the Pi and getting it all plugged in was, you guessed it, the AV out. Back in the early days of the Pi, it came with composite video right on the board. Since we live in the future now, the later revision Pis all have some form of HDMI out instead. Since we want to keep the look of this build sleek and unobtrusive, we can't have an HDMI port glued to the back. Instead, we are looking to use the multi-out port so we can use any off-the-shelf Nintendo AV cables. The analog audio is simple to find since there is still a standard 3.5mm headphone jack on the side of the Pi. The analog video on the other hand is a little more tricky to find. Little known fact about the newer Pi we have here is that we still have native analog video support built in. Instead of the video coming out of a standard composite video jack, they have hid it inside the headphone jack. So using some of the test points located on the bottom of the Pi, we were able to wire directly to the analog audio and video from the board. With the last bit of the puzzle solved, all that is left is to plug it all in, program the safe shutdown switch, and button the whole thing up. Now I would go into more detail regarding the safe shutdown script and getting that set up and working, but I personally am not quite smart enough to figure out the programming, and instead followed ETA Prime's video on how to set it up, and it worked great. The video is a bit old, but since it still works, I'll go ahead and leave a link to how to get it set up down in the description. When I first started on this journey, I wanted to try to maintain the functionality of both the shutdown switch and the reset switch alike. I had seen some tutorials online of getting the same functionality out of the 1UP arcade cabinets and their on-off toggle switch, but for the life of me I could not sort it out for myself. For now I have wired up so that the power switch is a hard cutoff directly from the power source, and the reset switch operates as a safe shutdown slash boot option. As you can see from the outside, the project was a success. I feel like aside from the USB hanging out the back, I was able to successfully achieve my goal of creating the ultimate Super Famicom. The ports both work with first party controllers. In theory, they should work with any third party controllers as well, but I sadly don't have any to test out. I really enjoyed the overall simplicity of this project. I like how relatively quick and easy it was to put together. Since most of the components here are plug and play, the most complicated part was getting it all to fit in the case. Someday I would love to be able to incorporate the cartridge somehow, but for now it's just for show. Now that it's all put together, there's just one last thing to do, and that's to enjoy some games. If you like what you see on this channel, feel free to hit the like and subscribe for more content. If you've got any suggestions as to what to do differently or ways to improve it, I'd love to hear about it in the comments down below.